Earth, vibrant, alive, drifting quietly in the darkness. As we leave it behind, something greater draws near, not just a destination, but a relic of cosmic violence and time, the moon. Its face may seem unchanging, but its past is anything but still. In this journey, we'll uncover how it was born from fire, shaped by collisions, and scarred by ancient lava flows. Then, in stunning 4K detail, we'll tour its most iconic landmarks, Shackleton Crater, the South Pole Aitken Basin, Tycho's brilliant rays, the Taurus Littrow Valley, and the Apollo 17 landing site. Welcome to Wormhole to Cosmos. From year to year, the moon never seems to change. Craters and other formations appear to be permanent now, but the moon didn't always look like this. The moon likely started its life as a giant ball of magma formed from the remains of an impact on Earth about four and a half billion years ago. After the hot material collected into a sphere, the magma began to cool, eventually forming a crust on the surface of the moon, with the magma just underneath. Around 4.3 billion years ago, a giant impact battered the moon's south pole, forming the South Pole Aitken Basin and sending debris as far as the opposite side of the moon. This impact marked the beginning of a period that would cause large-scale changes to the moon's surface. One by one, more huge collisions shaped the terrain, some forming large basins that would eventually fill in to become the dark-colored patches of the moon known as Maria. They began as normal craters, but soon started to change due to the size of the impact on the relatively thin crust. Because the moon had not yet fully cooled on the inside, lava began to seep out through the cracks caused by the impacts. The resulting volcanic activity spread lava throughout the craters, gradually filling them in and cooling. Because of the high iron content of the basalt in the rock, the maria reflect less light and, therefore, appear darker than the surrounding highlands of the moon. Around one billion years ago, volcanic activity ended on the near side of the moon as the last of the large impacts made their mark on the surface. The moon continued to be battered by other impactors, although they were much smaller than the objects that formed the largest basins. Some of the largest, most recent, and best-known impacts from this period include the Tycho, Copernicus, and Aristarchus craters, which are unique due to the complex system of rays that stretch out from the impact site. Finally, we arrive at the moon that we see today. The surface continues to be affected by impacts. The rate has slowed down drastically to the point that moon is not changing to the human eye as a permanent record of its own history. And the glimpse, how did craters made of formed here on Earth? It's our nearest neighbor in space, and data we gather from its features can tell us a lot about the rest of our solar system. And through the eyes of the LRO spacecraft, we can explore the lunar surface in all new ways in fascinating detail. Our tour begins on the western border, where the near side of the moon meets the far side. The enormous feature is a lunar crater, and it's known as the Oriental Basin. Here, LRO's terrain map combines with surface gravity measurements from the GRAIL mission. This data reveals structure in the lunar crust beneath the surface, giving us a window into the geologic features of the moon's interior. Our next location receives little direct sunlight and has some of the coldest recorded temperatures in the solar system, the South Pole. The highlighted spots signify potential water ice based on temperature readings from LRO's diviner instrument and reflectance from its laser altimeter, LOLA. LOLA also allows us to peer into the darkness of Shackleton Crater by bringing us this digital elevation model it's 21 kilometers wide and four kilometers deep, but it pales in comparison to the largest known impact crater in the Earth-Moon system, the South Pole Aitken Basin. Sitting on the far side, it's 2,500 kilometers across 
and 13 kilometers deep. We don't yet know exactly how old the basin is, but it was first seen in the 1960s by spacecraft flying around the far side. As much as we use LRO data to investigate areas we can't see from Earth, we also probe familiar territory on the lunar near side to bring back images with an all-new level of detail. This is Tycho Crater. It's around 100 million years old. Here, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera captures the central peak with a 100-meter-wide boulder at the summit, the origins of which are still a mystery. Continuing across Moon's near side, we will arrive in an area ripe for future exploration due to the diversity of impact and volcanic materials. It features a prominent crater so bright it's not only visible through telescopes, but also to the naked eye. Welcome to the Aristarchus Plateau. Here, infrared shows the mineral pyroxene in orange and a splash of plagioclase in blue from Aristarchus Crater. This region can tell us a lot about the rich volcanic history of the moon. As much as we study the moon looking for sites to visit, we also look back at places we've already been. This is because the new data that LRO is gathering helps us reinterpret the geology of familiar places, giving scientists a better understanding of the sequence of events in early lunar history. Here, we descend to the Apollo 17 landing site in the Taurus Litro Valley, which is deeper than the Grand Canyon. The path the astronauts took over the course of three days is shown. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera is even able to capture a view of the bottom half of the Apollo 17 lunar lander, which still sits on the surface, as well as the rover vehicle. These images help preserve our accomplishment of human exploration on the moon's surface. Moving onward, we make our way to our final destination. This location contains regions that exist in permanent shadow, as well as ones that bask in nearly perpetual light. It's the North Pole. Detailed terrain measurements by LOLA allow scientists to model sunlight and shadow at the poles over decades and centuries. Sunlit peaks and crater rims here may be ideal locations for generating solar power for future expeditions to the moon. This updated visualization of the lunar landscape stands as a testament to the functionality and abilities of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft. And as the mission continues to gather data, it will provide us with many more opportunities to take a tour of our moon. As we leave the lunar surface behind, we're reminded that this lifeless, cratered world still has so much to teach us. From its fiery birth to the quiet shadows of Shackleton and the brilliance of Tycho's rays, the moon holds the history of our solar system, etched in rock and dust. Thank you for watching with us today on Wormhole to Cosmos. If you enjoyed this journey, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with someone who still looks up at the night sky with wonder. Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell once said, Instead of an intellectual search, there was suddenly a very deep personal recognition that something powerful connects us all, to the moon, to the stars. That sense of connection between Earth and moon, past and future, is what drives our exploration. Let us know in the comments. Which part of the moon would you explore if you had the chance?
What surprised you most about the moon's history? And remember, the universe is vast, mysterious, and full of wonders waiting to be explored. Stay curious, keep looking up, and until next time, keep your eyes on the stars. This is Wormhole to Cosmos.